Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, welcome back. Episode 90, the Hebrew Congregation of Houston. It is good to be in the house. We're in a new month. So April 1st was yesterday, a new attitude. And so we're in the Passover month. And so we know that the Passover is about us uh, leaving Egypt, right? Which we're in another Egypt right now, and that's going to come one day. But anyway, uh, and so we want to talk a little bit about that. I know last week, um, Easter Keeping It Real was real, real. We, we talked about the wars and everything um, that had taken place. And so I want you to, to tune into that. And, and I want you to research that because that's going to be very important about, again, our exodus. Because we're going to have to exodus out of here too, right? And that's what we've been talking about, the Hebrew congregation of Houston. And so I have a guest today. Say hello, Joyce, Sister Joyce. <laughs> so she's my visitor today. Did you want to say anything before I get started? No, I'm just blessed and welcome to be here. We're happy to be here. Well, welcome into the house, my home in the house of Yahweh. And so uh, we welcome you in, okay? Thank you. All right. And so um, our parashah was Leviticus 12 through 13. Uh, this week parashah is Leviticus 14 through 15. So Leviticus 14 through 15 is the new parish off. Uh, our other announcement is the Passover is April 15 through the 23rd. So April 15 to the 23rd. And so we know we got the pagan uh, holiday in the middle, Easter on the 17th. We went over this time and time again that Easter is a pagan holiday. I know it's uh, hard to get away from it. Incorporate it in. That's how I started. Incorporate it in. So celebrate the Passover from the 15th through the 23rd. And then if you want to do your pagan until you, you get this, you know, I'm not going to say do it, but just incorporate, celebrate our days. All right. Yahshua, Lord Jesus Christ, he celebrated Passover, right? Right before he was uh, crucified, he, he did the Passover and Sabbath day, correct? And so we have to get back to this. We have to get back to the beginning. Um, and I just want to say a little bit about, I know Biden signed that, uh, that bill for that, that lynching is now a federal hate crime. After all this time, lynching is a federal hate crime. And it's like a, a Emmett, in reference to the Emmett Till, we know that he was lynched because allegedly, I guess he whistled at a white woman um, and they lynched him. But we're making progress slowly, but for surely, you know, we think in our minds like, wow, that's just now a, a, a bill that they signed, but we're, we're crawling up on it. We're making some progress here. And so uh, all we can do, like I said, God is doing it. Are y'all way he's doing it. And so that battle is not ours, it's his. We just have to, what I keep saying, get in position. All right. And so if you want re new results, you have to do something new. You want new results, you have to do something new. One more again, <laughs> you want something new, you have to do something new. And so if you're destitute, if you're confused, people have died in your family, your heart is broken, the walls are closing in, you, you need to do something new. And so we're, we're telling you what to do and everything we're telling you to do, what? is how to move forward, an intimate relationship with Yahweh. He's the only one that's going to get you through this. Try him. Try him. Mm. And so uh, that being said, uh, the mics are open if you want to talk about like what Passover means to you and how you kind of got in, in and started to Passover. Mm. Okay. Oh, by the way, before anybody chimes in, let me just say this. Uh, Minister Mike sent out a video, okay? And in that video, you know, if you really want to talk about Passover, that video will give you some good information, all right? <laughs> okay. And so I'll post the video. I'm sure I got it, but I've, I've had Joyce, my, my lovely guest here all week, so. <laughs> and and I have have I, as I had mentioned in the, uh, in, in the text that I sent out, um, a lot of your smart TVs, they come automatically with that 2B channel, but it's a free channel if you need to download the app. 
And then once you download the app on your on your TV or your smart TV and everything, you can view it there if you don't want to use like your laptop and phone or something like that. So, but it, I, I and I just ran across it and I was like, oh my God. I'm like, this is kind of like what Rabbi's been mentioning all this time. And they actually have like lot footage. <laughs> yeah. The people can see, uh, actually get to see. Yeah. I said, they've been watching our classes. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched that thing about three times already. All three, all three of them. I'm still watching it. <laughs> right. Me, me, me too. I'm, I'm, when we get off today, I'm going to resume. <laughs> yeah, me too. I fell asleep watching it. <laughs> so, uh, Minister uh, Mike, you have it? the screen. I know you want it. I know you have Passover behind you. You're yeah. back. Your backdrop. So here. I'm going to kind of like move out the way so people can see. A lot of time when you're doing Passover and or you attend a Passover Seder, they will have these particular items, and all of all of them are symbolic. And a lot of stuff you have in your uh, probably already have in your home, or you can get from your local grocery store. Like at the very very top, um, you'll see they have the horseradish. This is kind of like the whole uh, bit of uh, herbs, which is known in Hebrew as the maror. Then in the very center, you have the matzah. And a lot of times you want to find the matzah if you're going to kind of implement this whole process is the ones that's um, kosher for Passover. And they even have ones that are called shamir uh, matzah, which is the guarded matzah, which those particular matzah are specific for Passover because they can't, um, they're made and everything, but everything has to be done within 18 minutes because they don't want the leaven and stuff like that to begin to rise in. And they have a little bit more different um, taste and the, especially the round shamor, my said I ordered, and texture to them. They're a little bit more um, denser, if you, if, so to speak. And I have a video from last year on how to make it, the unleavened bread, if you want to make it yourself. And so I'll repost that video too. So I have the video uh, on, on how to make the unleavened bread and then you discard it after, uh, the, the day is over, you throw it away, the, the what's left over. And so you can do it daily, but go ahead, Minister Mike. And then over it, probably in the one o'clock, one, two o'clock position, you see, which is called the Zoroa, which is the shank bone. And um, if you ever need a shank bone, sometimes people will substitute and use like the drumstick of, of a chicken and everything. But if you go to some of your Mediterranean uh, restaurants, like we went the other uh, week to Fadi's and Fadi's, stuff like that. they have the lamb. You get okay. lamb. They so help you can, food get places and, and get the yes. lamb too. I, I make the lamb. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Come with your bad self then. <laughs> and then there's the haroset, which is kind of like a, a, a mixture of apples and cinnamon and and um, you can pour like grape juice or wine on it. Um, and all this is all part of the uh, Seder plate, these items, which you would want to have at your uh, table. And then you have the, uh, the carpus, which is over probably over here in the like seven o'clock position, which is usually like, you know, parsley, um, celery, stuff like that. It's another form of, of the bitter herbs. Um, you, above that is the uh, beta, which is the egg, which is actually something that was implemented later on um, in history um, as, far, as part of the Passover Seder plate, um, which kind of like represents the destruction of the temple and stuff like that. And I think I've mentioned just about everything on there, uh, more of the bitter herbs. Uh, like I say, that horseradish, it is just something to be desired. But if it doesn't bring um, tears to your eyes or open up your nostrils, you ain't made it or you ain't in the right. <laughs> now, I can't do the horseradish because I can't do anything spicy. So what I do is you can get the Italian herbs. You can the pesto. And I use the pesto. And it has all the herbs. And that's how when you go into Italian restaurants, you dip it in the bread with the oil and all mm. the herbs in it. So I use the pesto. So there are substitute things oh, you can use, God. too. And then another thing you want to gonna want to have at your table also is you want to have your glass of wine because there's a process in there where you're gonna uh, represent the uh, ten plates, so you will be making these drops of the uh, wine into your plate. But you're also gonna be drinking uh, wine throughout with the different um, hagaf and blessing, you know. And then you want to have a glass of water that salted water because that's gonna represent like the tears and stuff like that. But it's a very very simple easily don't have to cost you a whole lot of money go no big ex expense no you can order these plates online if you just need to remember or even look online just to, to uh, know what your seder 
table should look like or the item that you will need on it. This just gives and, me and to make it kind of fun, you can sit down on the floor, put a blanket yes. out, sit down on the floor with your children and have your meal. And so right. that's and what, it, what it's about is recognizing the day and then being with your family. So that's yeah. really what it's all about. And then right. there's certain prayers you can do. You can look up the prayers or you can just say your own prayers. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of it is, you know, you're leaning on to your left. And, and Rabbi, he has like a, a family Seder book and you just follow the whole little uh, process. And of course, you want to have a, a, a bowl or some type of um, container where because you're going to be washing your hands um, throughout the part, process. And this is one of the one times where you will not be eating bread. The matzah will be substituting for the bread. <laughs> and, and you're supposed to get all the bread out your house. That's right. what, what you're supposed to do. All the and, I, and I know I got 99 problems and food ain't one. So you can go without that bread for a week. So quit playing with me. That's, <laughs> East, that's that Easter keeping it ready. And, and, and if you have, if you know of a, of an of a, a, a Orthodox rabbi or a, a rabbi that practices, you can actually, what they do where they purchase, if you know, where you put like, uh, you close off. If you can't just get rid of all this stuff, because you know, that's a lot of money. If you have like a lot of leaven and all of this other stuff in, in your um, pantry and stuff. So you can get these items and they have a form you can fill out, fill out, which is kind of like, you know, you're gonna, it, it's up for sale, you know, or you just close it off, you know? Yeah, you can just close it off. Like you say, yeah, right in your pantry and just don't, don't eat any of it. So. Right. Yeah. And so what I do too, bread. when I make my unleavened bread, I have the matzo there just in case you, you, your recipe don't go right or you do something wrong, have that there as a backup, okay? Yeah. So you definitely going to have your unleavened bread any way it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember, we're in the diaspora, so we do have some leniency. But when you decide not to use to or to take nourishment from your your yeast products, you have to say a prayer saying that you nullify all of it. Right. Because and again, again, we're in the diaspora. Right. And, and we're refugees in a strange land. So there is some leniency. It's just. You know, so when he's saying we're in the Neas 4, is that we're not in Israel. And so in Israel, everybody's doing this. Everybody's on one accord. I know because I've been there at this time. And so because we are in the United States, we're not basically the place we're supposed to be. There's some leniency that you can do things a little different here. Yeah. So that's what the rabbi is saying on, on, on that note. Okay. Right. And even so, a lot of times that first night of Passover, when you're not in the diaspora because there's this big time difference uh, from what's over in Israel, it's usually practiced two days. And so usually the first night is either with your family and then the second night you do with you know, a congregation or vice versa, you know? Yeah. So on the- when And you, so when Griff and I, we were over there at right. that time and everything is shut down. And then you have the, the, the sirens that's going over, going off at that time, at this time of year too. And so you can hear the horns going off. And so everybody, like I said, is on one accord. And so this is actually teaching. So when you, we go back over, your kids will know, they, they won't be ignorant, which is the lack of the knowledge to the fact of what's going on and where they came from, okay? Yeah, yeah and, and I'll add those sirens going off that we heard, that was to commemorate the Holocaust. And it was interesting, something I'd never seen before. We were in the hotel and the sirens, the sirens went off throughout all of Jerusalem. The whole town heard them. And every single, we looked out the window, every single person stopped right where they were. Like, it was like a, like a, um, you know, one of those. Uh, a silent for, prayer for like, them. Like for yeah. two minutes, was it like two minutes? Everybody had to be still. It was longer than that. It was, it was pretty long. It was out there and everybody literally just stopped mid step and just stood where they were. And the sirens went off. It was probably about like five to 10 minutes the sirens went off and they stood where they were. And then when the sirens uh, left, they continued on their way. Uh, so that was interesting to see in person. I never even heard of that before. And then we were there and we thought, we didn't know what was going on. You know, they got war over there in the Gaza Strip. So we like, man, we about to get bombed. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> but it was, but that was yeah, just but, one day of it, Griff. They had the Passover and they had the Holocaust just happened to fall on when the Passover was going on, which is the uh, the commemoration of the Holocaust happened to hit at the same time, yeah. like Christ the not. next day. Yeah, yeah. Christo not. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't acknowledge the ends, the African side of it. Nope. You know? 
So, just a but, year but, yeah. And so in our Seder, we recognize even the Holocaust, right? But in theirs, they don't even think, of, they don't even think about us. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what so, I talked about so, last week. Yeah. When they say yeah. that the Jews have been through a lot, it's us. We, we the one who've been through a lot, a lot. They've been through that one part, yes. I'm not going to take that away. But all that history that I gave about the Syrian war, the Babylonian war, the Romans, and all that money that they're sending over there now belongs to us. In Egypt, we were the one who were persecuted. Those are us. That's us in the Bible where all that stuff happened to. Those reparations, that money that's going into Israel is our money. All that stuff has happened to us. And like I said, I'm not trying to take away about the Holocaust, but more of our people die away than what the people died in the Holocaust. But it's like I said, it's one of those shh, shh, shh things. And there, there were a lot of people. That. And there were a lot of people of color that was in Germany at the time that they don't discuss. That were also that Hitler not annihilated because they found, and it was actually, I believe, it was a, a group of uh, black soldiers that found all of these graves where all of these black people had been killed. And mm. then of course, then of course they did like the, you know, the Caucasian Jews also, you know? So, cause he, he just figured we were like monkeys. If you've ever seen the movie Race about Jesse Owens and everything, that joke was a piece of work. <laughs> he, he refused to have anything to do with Jesse Owens every time he won. And that was part of a standard where you would greet the winner regardless of the, that you were the head of state. But he had always an excuse, oh, he got sick. Oh, he had to leave and I'm, you know, the, the movie was phenomenal. I, I really like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you even like get into our parish, y'all, because everything is black is bad. Black Friday, the black sheep, the, the everything is don't eat the, the even a black jelly bean. I mean, come on now. E- everything they say. But if you look at our parish, y'all, it was the opposite. Moses putting his hand in and, and it turning white. That was the bad thing. If you look at the leprosy, the white was the was the was the bad thing, was the plague. When the priest and say, Oh, you can't come up in this camp, you outside the camp for a while. Seven days, we'll check you again. It ain't it's, it's still white in seven days. Oh, it got some white hair on it. Oh no, you you can't come up in here. Your skin white and you got some white hair growing up. So it's a lot. It's all been a lie. Because everything was black, everything was brown, everything had melanin. We have to read. That's the only way we're going to find out. Yeah. But he had to flip it around. The devil's a liar. What he's supposed to do? He lies. He flips it around. I, I'm, I'm is beautiful. Be. Stop playing. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't want to read, watch the movie. Watch the, <laughs> watch the video, right? Reclaiming. Right. Reclaiming the throne. I, I, that, that was nobody but God that dropped that into my screen. And I looked up there and I was like, what is this? And I clicked on I was like, Oh my God. And all I could picture and all I could hear was just rabbi, all these years of the teachings and stuff that he never talked about and that I've heard other people talk about. I'm like, oh wow. I'm like, they got this in living color now for yeah. anyone to see on national TV. Yeah, with and with documentation to back yeah. it up. Yeah. Can I share? Yeah. Something? Yes. And Joyce would like to share something. Go ahead, Joyce. I would like to share that I am a direct lineage. My name is Klein. My great grandfather came from Germany. He married a black woman. This we're the first black Klein family. We're the only black Klein family. And mm. I know the history of linking. I've never been to Germany, but I know that's where my family, my great grandfather originated from. And yes, he was white. He was curly brown hair. <laughs> I've seen pictures. Well, this, here this I am was- sitting black, wearing black. Mm-hmm. This is like a perfect segue into something I want. I wanted to share. I was going to. I was going to put it up. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen right quick. Oh, I'm sorry. I reclaimed it from you. Let me. Oh. Let me give it back to you. I didn't. I didn't know if you were going to do anything. Okay. Uh, go ahead. You got it. I'm going to share like maybe these. Oh, it still says disabled. Let me try it one more again. Okay. Now it's came. Okay. Okay, let me see. Where is it at? Um, I think I need to be here. So, Akota, Lisa, and I—we were actually, you know, kind of like d- discussing this uh, over the weekend. And it's, do you? And I think I may have shared this with a few, few of y'all. 
these three guys, Dr. Robert Morse, who is still living today, Dr. Sebi, which we know, um, blessed memory, he has passed on. And then there's Professor Arnold Eret, who was mm -hmm. born in Germany and so back in the 1800s. And so much of his thought and belief was almost the same as Dr. Sebi, because he believes that um, all diseases and sicknesses thrived from mucus. And a lot of the doctors back then and scientists did not jump on board with that. And he even talked about getting away from mucus um, making foods, which is the same thing Dr. Sebi uh, uh, taught. And I don't know if y'all can see this. This is if you go, you can actually Google Dr. Uh, Eric. And I thought this was interesting. I'm, I'm not sure if I can, if y'all can see this part. No, um, we can't, we can't see it, but uh, you can tell us about it. Okay, uh, get out of this. I can, we can see it now. Right here, this I thought was interesting. This was like part of his belief. He said the white race, and I'm uh, if by no means are we saying anything negative about you no know, the 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 white race stuff like that. But he said the white race is unnatural. He said the white skin color is the result of mucus laden white blood corpuscles clogging the system. He also talked about how the reason white blood cells form is because mucus comes into the system which kind of like m m makes sense, which is the whole thing. White blood cells form to combat sickness and disease. Right. So when the mucus comes in and everything, then the white blood cells, okay, we got to start reproducing. We you know, we got to you know, kill, kill this joke you know, like, like that. So I thought it was very, very interesting, him being not for sure if he had any kind of mixture or anything back in him, but you know, like this didn't come from a melanin brother. That, that spoke this. <laughs> so uh -huh. I thought it was very, very um, interesting um, that he brought that up. He has a lot of uh, stuff in there. He even talked about um, fasting and how that is kind of like one of the most omnipotent forms of how the body actually kind of like detox itself from eating too much of the wrong food or eating too much food, period. You know. Here. And then I'm going to go right back to uh, that's me. And I'm just going to do probably like about two or three more sl slides. Um, right here, we you know one of the things that we need to be cognizant of is eating healthy, resting, and relaxation. Too many times we're under so much stress and duress. You know, uh, what we see on TV, what we hear in conversation, whether it be on TV, on the radio, and we can become consumed, not even realizing the stress and the rest that we're putting on our body uh, physically and emotionally. And all that plays a part um, in your health, not just what, you, what you're eating physically, but what you're absorbing through what you're hearing, what you're um, seeing also, you know, that affects your health. And we want to also make sure that we get uh, water. Water is vital to every organ and cell in our body. Make sure you get your water. There you go. <laughs> get your water. Yes, there's a thing where you can consume too much water, but you don't want to deprive yourself of water. It controls so much of what your digestive system and regulating it with, with your blood. Water is something that we cannot do. We can go without food for a few days. Even I've even heard people go on 40 day fast where all they had was water, but you cannot go without water for no 40 days. You cannot go without water for a week. <laughs> exactly. And um, there's at the end of these um, slides, there's a gentleman, Dr. Berg, if you'll look him up on YouTube, he has excellent information and he gives these uh, six common mistakes of drinking water. And I will talk about number two last, but number one, drinking too much water. And I have a friend, she drinks a lot of water and you would think that she would be very healthy, but at present she is recovering, let me say that. And so you don't wanna consume water too fast. It will overload your system, overwhelm your system. And so you wanna take your time and drink. 
Uh, slide number three, I'm sorry, uh, point number three, drinking the wrong fluids. Yes, you say, well, I'm drinking this, I'm drinking that. And you say, well, I'm getting my water in that. But be careful about that. Soda, alcohol, um, these dehydrate the body. And uh, even teas, especially the, uh, I think it, what is it, carb carbonated or uh, caffeine, you want to be careful about that. Don't just drink anything. Be a label reader. Uh, my son has joked with me. He's now 30, whatever now. And he used to say when I was, when he was small, mom, you read the labels on everything. I have to, because my life is on the line. I have to know what's in the product before I consume the product. Because as you, many of you have said, this is the temple and we have to take care of the temple. We have to clean the temple. We have to preserve things that are in the temple. So be careful about what you consume and drinking water too quickly. Sodium in the blood doesn't balance the fluid. It can create swelling. So be careful with that. Amen. And to complete these, um, Drinking water while eating. When I was a CNA, we had training on how to feed our patients. And what we would do is give them two bites to eat and then give them something to drink. But that can dilute, as it says here on the screen, it can dilute your gastric juices. And you don't want to do that. You want to be careful about um those juices because they help to digest what you're eating. So be careful about drinking while eating. You, it's fine to drink it afterwards. Uh, that's a good thing. Or maybe before right. drinking a lot of very cold water. Uh, be careful with that as well. This is one of the mistakes that Dr. Berg has listed. I met a gentleman while I was uh, doing landscaping and he told the story of a gentleman that was uh, playing basketball with some friends and he went and went over and got grabbed his water, very cold. And while drinking it, his heart burst. Yeah. Wow. You're exchanging heat for cold. And that's not a good thing at, uh, in that ratio. You don't want to go from very hot to very cold, even with your cooked items. You don't want to take it out of the oven and put it in the refrigerator. That causes a chain reaction. So be careful about drinking very cold water. It is suggested. I don't drink from the tap, but it is suggested to have lukewarm or tepid water right. um, uh, that you're drinking. And, and the then, last one, uh, drinking tap water, as I said, be careful because that water comes from the city, from that big tower over in your area where you live. The water comes from there. Even say, say you're getting your water from a pumping station uh, outside the store. I don't think they have those anymore, but that's the same water. Be careful. And I see that you all are getting wise and are wise about where your water comes from. And, and on that, when she was talking about that cold water, if you notice on the screen, it said that it inhibits the vagus nerve. If you're not familiar with the vagus nerve, it's part of your parasympathetic nervous system, which controls your digestion, it controls your heart rate, and it controls your immune system. And that was a practice I learned probably like about 10 or 15 years ago. So usually, if I'm, especially when I'm out to eat somewhere, I try to drink whatever I'm going to drink, because that's the first thing they bring you before they give you food. And then sometimes I won't even do that because I like to eat and I don't want to get full. But if you're like trying to watch weight, how much your food intake is, that would be a good practice. 30 minutes or so before you're going to go out to eat, drink you like a glass of water or something, because that's going to begin to fill you up. Because it takes a little bit of time for the stomach to send a signal back up to your brain to let you know, OK, wait a minute, we're full. That's how over uh, eating happens. I'm guilty of that. And all of a sudden I'm like still like, oh because I consumed and hoarded all this food and the message didn't get back to my brain to, to tell my, like, wait a minute, don't, don't put no more up here. We full, we good, we good. Exactly. So now I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. <laughs> exactly. And as you age, as you mature more, that system begins to slow down a little bit more. So it may take a little while for that signal to get back up to the brain and to say, okay, we're full, but what, guess what? You've eaten and you've consumed so that by the time the signal gets back, you're like, oh no, oh no, I'm too full. I can't move. I can't do anything. Yeah. So be aware, be uh, cautious about that. 
Yeah. And one of the things that our forefathers taught, we call them the sages, um, is that if you look in the Shulkan Ruch, many of you don't know about that, or in the Mishnah, Rambam's Mishnah Torah tells us that when we eat, we sh should not fill ourselves over 75% of our stomach, right? So that means leave some room in it and you don't overeat. So a lot of things that we're taught, were taught uh, or that was passed down to us, we didn't get, right? Because we lost that, that teaching, but the Europeans have it. And so they've had it and they've stored it for us. So now the opportunity now is for us to get it back to you. So all the things that we're learning about nutrition, about properly, uh, you know, preparing our foods, all these things are actually passed down through the sages or our forefathers. And, and the, one of the reasons why this is done is, as someone said earlier, our body is a temple, right? And if you pollute that temple, then the spiritual, thing, the spiritual forces cannot operate in your life. And if you wonder why sometimes you cannot adapt to the things that are taught in the Torah, it's because and you look at what you're eating, right? Kasher law is to help us, not only physically, but spiritually, right? So if you find yourself fighting against the Torah, its commandments is look at your diet. It plays, all of these things are tied together, right? All Rabbi, it's interesting you, you mentioned about the, the whole spiritual aspect, because we've mentioned that earlier about a lot of these different chemicals that are in our foods that affect our pineal gland. And that is one of the things that connects us spiritually. And if you notice in that last slide, when the coach at least was mentioning about the um, tap water, because tap water has chlorine and fluoride. Fluoride in water and pesticides all accumulate in your pineal gland. More than any other place in your body, they, they, they accumulate in your pineal gland. So then you have to go through that whole detoxification, trying to get this stuff out of, out of your system. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so again, all of these things that are being said, Minister Michael, Coda Lisa, all these things that they're talking about are in our parashaw, right? When you look at the last week's parashaw and the week before, it talks about it before, leading up to pass, Passover. It tells us how to keep our temples clean. And so we are instructed on, on the foods that we're to eat, the types of animals we're to eat, and why we we chose the the father chose those animals, and then it tells us how to to slaughter those animals and what parts of those animals we are to eat, and it and and all of those things are there, right? Again, that goes even to the to, to the to the, the the herbs and things that we're supposed. All that stuff is actually in the in the word, you know, because it tells every green herb he gave us to eat, right? So in the perfect state, right. In the more excellent way, he has given it to us through the herbs, right? And again, since we do eat types of meat, he gave us a specific animal to eat and a fish. And he covers meats, which are the, the, the animals that are on the land, the mammals. Then he talks about those that are in the sea, the fish that we're supposed to eat. And it talks about the birds that we are able to eat. And then it tells us which ones not to, even the insects, which ones are edible and which ones are not. And, and all of these, and, and, and notice that it's leading up to spiritual things, right? Spiritual things. And we're supposed to, as the leadership of the, the shepherds, we're supposed to instruct the children of Israel on what and how to eat. And the instructions are laid out for us in where? The Torah, right? Specifically in the, the book of Exodus and the book of Leviticus. Right, which is the we call the 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 spiritual book. It gives us our spiritual connection of of, the, of how we are to carry ourselves again in what we eat and how we eat it. it if it's meat, it must be cooked. Right. No if blood. it's meat, there should be no blood in it. Mm -hmm. If it's and there's certain like you can eat cows and goats, right? And those are animals. You can't eat dog. Can't eat horse. If you go to Germany, uh, Ashkenazim. Uh, 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 sister, uh, sister Joy, my great grandfather was Ashkenazi Jew. All right, so I understand that. So when you go to Germany, they're gonna feed you some horse. If you don't know what you're getting in Germany, they'll give you some horse. Oh, that's oh, not for us to eat. I'm See? not going over there now. We're not supposed to eat it. Well, if you go in the, in the <laughs> Korea, you go to China, you go to a different place. They're gonna give you squid, and and if you go down to 
it used to be Boston Sea Party and go to to uh, what is this place oh, that everybody likes to go to around here in Texas? Uh, Papa Doe's. Papa Doe's. They're going to give you that shrimp and that lobster. They're going to give you all that stuff that is contrary to what we should eat. Because the scripture tells us skins and fails. And, and, and what skins and uh, what do you call that stuff? Scales. Scales, right? Uh -huh. That means take away the shrimp. The fimp, take away the shrimp, the shrimp, shrimp. <laughs> take all that stuff, take that stuff out because those are scavengers. You know, you go out there, and you, you go on a deep sea fishing and you catch yourself a shark. And so you want some shark steak, throw that booger off the boat. Don't even, you know, get it off the boat, get some, you know, get that stuff off. You don't eat that. It's going to hinder you spiritually, right? Your spiritual growth, your connection to the father is affected, right? You go out there and you want to get a, uh, a snail, people eating snail, what they call it, escargot, right? Let that car go. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Let that go. Don't eat that. Because again, you want to hear from God. You want to hear from the Father. Don't put stuff that's going to block your spiritual your connection. Get rid of that mess. You got, you know, people, uh, you go out there, go hunting, and you're going to get you some coon. That is not on the list. You want to get some rabbit. That's not on the list. You know, I, I, I had a discussion with, this past weekend with, with, with some of my siblings, and I was saying, because of our culture and our ability to adapt, no matter where we're at, no matter what the circumstance, they adapted when they were in Egypt, when they had nothing but straw and stuff like that, to maybe, they adapted, they adapted, adapted, they adapted when they came to America as far as like, because now they have to take on a type of food that was not conducive to what they were used to eating in Africa. They took on a European diet, so they had to make it conducive to their taste bud. And just as it is said so very often in the scripture, how uh, the serpent beguiled Eve, we are beguiled by our taste buds. Mm -hmm. and if so it tastes people, good, people, that's a hard challenge. People are wondering, why are they talking so much about food? Because when we were brought over here and put in the slavery, we had to eat scraps. We, we have to re-educate ourselves. That's why there's a lot of diseases that, exactly. that come upon us because it's what we're putting in our body. You right. know, the, the pig, the, the, that pork, and there's a lot of worms inside of it. And so we have to re-educate ourselves on, yeah. on what, what's going on. And then they put us, what, in those uh, poverty neighborhoods where they put the groceries where we still was getting scraps. We were getting the bottom of the bottom of the vegetables and the foods. And then they put a bunch of chips and sodas and stuff. And we didn't have any cars. So we had to go to that market there and we ate what we could. It, it's called survival. We're yeah. out of that mode now. Yeah. We're educated now. We have cars. We can drive. We can, we can go to the health shops now. We can get to the top, to the prime. Because we, we are, we what? We're the original Jews. We're the kings and queens. We're the priests and priestesses. We need the prime. We no longer have to do the scraps like the dogs under the table. We are out of that. We know who we are. The gig is they up. Yeah, now it's they... time to go to the next, a higher level, yeah. to live longer, to exactly. do what the Lord wants us to do, to teach our children, to come up out of that. That's why we talk about this food. Exactly. But see, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. We have these things now. But again, we have to relearn. We have to educate because, see, we'll take that car that we got and still go to the same places. And we have to leave that. We have to leave that. There'll come a point in time in your life when you have to make a decision, a hard decision. Do I want to live or do I want to eat? Yeah. You want to live, but you have to make a wise choice as to what you eat to live. So don't take that nice car that she mentioned about and go to the same old raggedy place where you used to eat. Be wise about your choices. And so, so you know, yeah. uh, I, I was telling my husband, you know, when uh, we, he went through the cancer thing. And so I was saying, I, I read up on this. I had to educate myself. I started cooking all the things. And then he slowly got away from it for us to go to a seminar last week about cancer. And they told him the same thing. So he mm. said, hey, I want to go back to eating the way that you said. And so, I mean, it, we have to get there. And we don't, have to have, we don't have to be laying on a deathbed or a death table or let the white folks tell us to, to do it. Let's keep it real. And, and we're, telling, like, we're telling you now about it. Yeah. It's and so then it'll come back into your mind, man. Everything they were saying, all those minerals Minister Mike was talking about, he's, he's right. I, I need these things. Or they're going to give you the prescriptions, what's coming out of China. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so that's about to be cut off pretty soon. Once this war kick up, the real war 
when China joined, a lot of that stuff is going to be cut off. Then what are you going to do? You're going to have to go to natural foods, foods and get it out of there. That's what you're going to have to do. And it's so amazing. Why not, how all why, of this... why not learn about it now and, and add it to your 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 diet now? And he talked how... about that. He talked about that mucus. I listened. I went and got my limes. He said lime breaks up the mucus. I had COVID. I could feel something going on in my brain. I know because you know your body. My memory is like a plaque. And he said that's mucus, and it, it goes in all parts of your body. So I be having my lime now. You got to listen. You don't know it all. I don't know it all. I'm learning. I'm mm -hmm. walking this out too. I'm changing some things too. Iron we have, to, iron. we have to relearn this thing. And so we're going to go into, uh, the rabbi's going to go into the cashier uh, law. Go ahead, Minister Mike. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, we go, you can, once you finish, and uh, go into the prayer so rabbi can mm -hmm. go ahead and start here. Okay, I, I was just going to say iron sharp and iron, you know, we're, we're all learning and coming up together. We're trying to leave no one behind unless you want to be left behind. Right. You know, so let it not be said that you, you weren't told, you just chose not to adhere. And, you know, and, and like, by all means, do your research on anything that we give you. Do your, do your research. A lot of people say how it costs to eat healthy. Well, it seems like it's kind of a, a, a ironic how all of the bad stuff, the bad food is really, really dirt cheap. So we want to go cheap when we feed ourselves and go all out with what we drive and what we wear. But when it comes to our health, we play it down. But I say, you're worth it. Each and every one of you are worth paying more to eat healthy for your life. That's right. Even that water. I was like, oh, the Nestle water uh, always on sale for $3.99. That was cheap. And so then the Essentia, it costs more. But even my husband, um, he put some flowers that I had brought to his job inside this water. He had his water bottle and it had the essential water in there. He said the flowers live for two weeks. He said he'd never seen nothing like it. And so uh, if you can go ahead and do the prayer and we're going to just talk, we're going to keep talking and telling you because sometimes you got to hear over and over and over again till you land there on that gurney or you land there in that bed, that, that hospital bed, you'd be like, man, I, I need to listen to them. They're right. It's always better when you make the choice than your body or your doctor did. Because then once your body your, has shut down or you've gotten to the doctor, you've reached a point in your health that you never, ever wanted to be. Been there. Done that. Yeah. Okay. Baruch atah Adonai, Elohinu melech ha'alam, asher kedishanu, b'mitzvotah v'sivanu, la'asok b'devre Torah. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our power, king of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves in the words of Torah. Amen. So Amen. thank you so much. We're going to have our great rabbi, Afshalom, take it over. Uh, he's going to teach on what the cash a lot, which is talking about what we should be eating also. And yeah. so we care about you all. We love you. And that's why we have these topics. That's why we have these discussions. Rabbi, if you can go ahead and take it over. Thank everybody for uh, all the ministers, uh, uh, apostles, uh, cults, and all the women here uh, for logging on. We love you. You can go ahead, Rabbi Afshalom. Right. Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, again, this is um, this is a, a very special time for us in in the household of Israel, and. It's so important for us to learn these things and to, to actually not just learn about, but to learn them, meaning do them, right? So this week, we're starting to move into the Passover. And what I'm going to teach on today uh, with the help of the Lord is, is the foods that we should be eating and, and the importance of them. Not only that, but there are things that in the next parashah, or the parashah that is right after Shemini, uh, it deals with the teachings of Nida, and it teaches about the disease of uh, Zeriah, okay, and which is a white spot on on the blemish on the skin that shows up. But in beginning this. Uh, teaching, we're looking at the parent in this parish, y'all, 
Um, and, and again, next week on the 14th, okay, on the 14th, I must remind you on the 14th at twilight is when we start the Passover meal. Okay, so we're going to be talking about this again on next week because it's so important, right? And the things that are in that Passover meal are kosher, right? They are kosher things, meaning they are set apart for us. They are things that are acceptable for us to eat, but they are there to remind us that our forefathers were delivered out of the world system that they had been involved with for 400 years, 430 years or so. And at that time, it was time for them to come out of the world system, right? There are things that we were told to do. So this Passover coming up, let it be a reminder to you that you are not a part of the world system. You just live in the world system. But, but in our living in the world system, we are a different people. We are not the same as everyone else when it comes to our relationship with the creator, our father, Avinu, Shabbat, Shammai, Shabbat, uh, Shabbat Shammaiim, our father, which is in heaven. We have been indoctrinated into a system that is not ours. Our forefathers were, had been indoctrinated in some ways into a system that was not theirs. It was a system that was taught to them through our father Abraham. And so they knew how to stay clean from the nation, a different people. We are a different people. The world knows that we are a different people. The world has sought to contaminate us and to separate us from our father, right? So in this parish, y'all, if, if um, you would go to Leviticus, let me see if I can find something to share with you. Uh, okay, I'm sharing my screen. Um, I'm going to go to Leviticus chapter 11. All right. And I'm going to start there. Because remember, when we were taken into captivity during the First World War, if you've been in the study following us, you know what I say the First World War. I'm talking about the transatlantic slave trade or the, the middle track, middle passage. Leviticus chapter one, uh, chapter 11, starting at verse one. All right. These foods that we are to eat are prescribed for the children of Israel, not for the nations. If the nations want to be a part of us, if they want to live a, 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 a spiritual or a, a, whole, a holy life, a set apart life, then they will attach themselves because there's only one teaching for us, the children of Israel. And everyone that joins themselves to us, that can be only one teaching, not two. If you are of the children of Israel, say this again, I said this earlier. If you are of the children of Israel and you are studying and being taught from the Torah, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible as penned by Moshe Rabbeinu of blessed memory. If you are having difficulty accepting these truths, again, I would say, check your diet. One of the things you have to check is your diet. Your diet, not just necessarily food, but as it was said earlier, the things that you hear and the group that you're hanging out with, those will affect you in your, your ability to, to attach yourself, reattach yourself to the Father, okay? The vine and the branch, whatever, how you want to look at it, right? The tree and the root, right? A tree that has bad roots cannot live. We as African-Americans, as they call it, as Africans in America, have lost, as it says in the movie, we lost our root. So our tree is dying, right? But it's not completely dead. There's still some life in those roots. There's some strength in those roots. That is, the Torah, the Bible is here. So this Bible is actually what's sustaining us and keeping us during this time. 
right? Because we do at least have the Brit Hadashah that we are there, that the Catholic Church allowed us after a while, you know, after emancipation approximation, allowed us, they started letting us read. And, and for them, it was a mistake because we started to find out who we were. But we, there was a portion of us that always knew who we were. They call it Africa. They call it Africa Israel. You cannot separate Africa from Israel. You cannot separate Israel from Africa. We are one people, All right? So in this book of Leviticus, this book that teaches us how to be a holy nation, Leviticus teaches us how to be a holy nation. Leviticus teaches us how to be a holy people. If you want to know how to live holiness, go to the book of Leviticus. Study it, meditate on it, and begin to live by it. There are some things that are not, that are not for us today that are there because we don't have a temple, right? We're not in the land, but for the most part, most of it, especially the foods we can do. The preparation of the food we can do. Separation of certain foods, eating certain foods at the same time, we, we can do. Let me just throw this little thing on you. It's not healthy to have fish and meat at the same time. It's not healthy to have, you know, uh, you know, uh, various kinds of meats. Various kinds of meats. It's not healthy to overeat more than 75%, right? Of the filling of your stomach. These things are important. It is important, however, to fast once in a while. Very important. So, uh, abstain from food, right? Drink you some water because that pure water that comes in, it takes out impurities, all right? It removes impurities. You know, I'm, I'm talking about health and wealth now. Y'all got to forgive me. <laughs> okay, okay. But again, you cannot talk cash rate law without talk health and wellness, right? You cannot live a holy life without understanding, you know, foods and the consumption of food. At the proper time. All right. So Leviticus 11, 1. It says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts, the Bahamit, Bahamit uh, which you shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Again, he's talking to who? Children of Israel. Children of Israel. What we say in the morning, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad. Right? Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one God, right? One. He is one, right? We say that in the morning, and before we lay down to go to sleep, guess what we say? Shema Yisrael, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Well, half day, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, we say that. Remind, it reminds us who we are and whose we are and that we worship the one. We are the people of the book. We are the people that study the book of Leviticus, right? All right, it says, verse three, whatsoever partake it, but part of the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beast that you shall eat. Now, what can you think of, like, you know, it's talking about, let me, I got to pull out another book. That I don't have a, a, a picture for it. I wish I had the pictures. Yeah. Actually, I do have them. I do have them. Give me just a second here. I do have them. My goodness. Let me share something with you. Let me see something here. Uh-oh. Let me try this here. I do this, um, let's see if I have it here. If I do, I will show it. I don't have it. Oh my, I don't have it. 
And Rabbi, one of the things that you know, when we read that that chew at the the cud, that's kind of like with the um, the cow or the sheep because they chew their food over it slowly. Oh, if you ever watch cows eat, they chew ever so slowly, but mm -hmm. they chew it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And then it's almost like they regurgitate it to uh, di pre digested stuff, and they chew it over again. And yeah. then finally they they swallow. It. So when they're chewing the cud, that's what that process uh, is. Yeah, and that, eat and swallow. <laughs> yeah, they have yeah the different stomachs that they have in the right. cow, right? Yeah, and and so these animals again they're they're chosen for us for a specific purpose, right? And so, um, let me get back over here again. I have it here somewhere. I pulled it up, but it's not showing up on the screen from where I want to show you. But um, I do have it somewhere. Well, that's okay. We can just talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, the cow is one of those those animals, right? The cow. Am I showing my screen now? No. No. Mm -mm. Mm, okay. It was earlier. It was showing it, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm going back to it. Yeah, I'm sharing it now. Yes. But um, it's it's. I just name some of them. I just name them off um, because you know. Uh, yeah, we don't want to get. We know it's the cow, right? Okay, and and I don't, because a lot of they'll give you different names. Oh, let me share it. I'm sharing. It. I'm sharing you something else that's coming up. That's that's a different share that I'm showing right there. That share that I'm showing there is, is about leprosy. But this one. Uh, the animals that we can eat, it talk is is think about the goat, right? Think about the cow, right? Uh, they have split hooves, right? Um, those we can eat, and the ones you can't eat are like the camel, the hare, right? The um, boar. wild boar. You know, people go out and they go shoot these javelina, javelina, whatever they call them. We don't eat that. That's pig, right? You don't eat that, okay? So you don't, we're not supposed, you know, we used to go rabbit hunt. We're not supposed to eat rabbit, right? Holy people, we don't eat rabbit. I know it's going to mess a lot of us up, yeah. you know, but it's for our own good. And if you know, my dad used to tell you, he said, oh, rabbit, you got to be careful because they have worms in them. My dad used to tell me that. You got you to be careful. If you eat them at the wrong time, you get worms, right? Right. And so there's a reason why we don't, you know, our Parents, I don't know, mine, you know, they used to talk to us about things that they didn't reference it or say it in the context of being Jews or Israelite, but they would just talk to us about how they grew up. And these, when you search the scripture, you find out, well, that came right out of there. Exactly. And they knew it and they taught it. They didn't know Torah. They didn't know all the books that we were exposed to now, but they knew it was in them and they taught it to us. And their parents, yeah, their parents taught them. So, but what's happened is many times is that being in, in deprived of our knowledge, a lot of times when we joined into a specific religious group or groups, uh, which were actually Gentile run or not Torah based, they introduced us to and kept us in those things and used excuses to keep us there. Yeah. Saying that it doesn't matter because that's the Old Testament, right? right? There's no such thing as an Old Testament. It's called Torah or it's called Tanakh. It's called the law and the prophets, right? And the writing, the law, the prophets and the writings or the Tanakh. So those things are relevant today and we have to understand that. So our parents, again, they knew, though they knew the truth and were taught a lot of things, again, it was the influences, the outside influences that many times attached itself to us. And by the Bible being weaponized by the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. The enemy weaponized the Bible against us and understanding who we are and who we were, they did not want us to operate in the power that we have. So they introduced these things like the hair and going uh, boar hunting and, and how we killed our animals, you know, was not according to the prescribed method, right? That was given to us. Kashrut law, okay? 
So we have to understand that and go back to it. Again, they, if they don't chew the cud, if they don't have the, 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 the amount of stomachs, but we already know we can eat cow, the whole cow, okay? Don't go by that glot stuff. Go by the whole, we can eat the whole cow as long as it has been, the blood is removed, the, the fat. When it says don't eat the fat, because the veins are in there or the big blood vessels that carry the blood is still there. We got to remove that. We have to be careful where we buy our food, our meats, right? Because it has to be properly treated or, 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 or slaughtered for us. We have to understand that, right? So you can, eat, I just put it that way. You, you can eat some goat, you can eat some cow, all right? You, you're safe with those, right? You're safe with those. Right. Uh, they're in there right they chew the cud right okay the, now the swine we don't eat and verse 7 says and the swine though he divided the hoof it be clothed hood footed yet he cheweth, the, cheweth not the cud he is unclean to you all right so if you're going down there you're gonna get you some bacon and some ham and you're gonna fry those those uh those what do you call them ribs pork ribs because they tender oh yeah they tender they tender but they're not for you. And it's going to, it is going to hinder your spiritual. If you think you're flowing in the Holy Ghost right now, you get on this, this cash rate law. You get in this cash rate law and you will see some power. You'll begin to see things you never dreamed of. Mm. The power that you have when you walk in the Father. I mean, but you know, that, that, that's just one part of it. Right again, we have the Sabbath and we kept the feast. All these things attach us to the covenant that we're born into as the children of Israel. So stay away from that. He says, uh, "These you shall eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever has fins and scales." Right, fins as at the very basic, at the very basic of the knowledge, you can do this. Right, verse nine: These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the river, they sh that them you shall eat. Skin, so that takes away the shark, that takes away again the catfish. It takes catfish, boy, we love that catfish. Go to catfish kitchen. Mm -hmm. I had a, I had one of my mentors. You're making me hungry, Rabbi. Catfish? Yeah, catfish. <laughs> you know, I can look at that catfish and just get a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't stand catfish. I, I don't even like, I catch them on my hook. I don't even, you know, I don't even, I put my foot on it, pull it off. Bring them back. <laughs> Going back in the water. And them boogers will sting you too. Yeah, That's right. They, they stick you, you know. I never had it done to me, but I've seen people do it, get it done to. Yeah. So again, skins are fair. You get you some redfish, you know. Good, you know, it costs a little more to get that redfish. You know, they, they're a little more expensive. You know why? Because they want to make sure it's hard for you to get and eat. So you'll buy the cheap stuff. What's the cheap stuff? Catfish. They give you the cheap one, the catfish. Because that's the scavenger. And that's what they want to do. You know, you are, you're a raw priesthood. You, you belong to the Father. You should eat the best. Not lobster. That is expensive, but it's not for me, okay? That king crab and that stuff, that's not yours. That's for them, right? And... and and, and if, you're, if you're attached to that flavor, that taste, we can, we can make that too. Because it's in the salt, right? It's in how you make it. If you want that texture, we can give you the texture. And, it, and, and it'd be good for you, right? Right? Okay. So understand that if, you, if you're attached to the flavoring, which we, most of us are, there's a way around it. We can fix it. There's, if you live on the East Coast, live in that Georgia area, in the D.C. area, you can get some good food over there. Sure. By the way, the East Coast, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, where our folks came in, them folks were Israelite. They call them Jews. Mm -hmm. And they dark, dark, dark. That's, you know, that's so much we don't understand about ourselves. Yeah, we didn't, I should say, there's so much we did not understand about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? But it has come to light now because the two years, two thousand years have passed. We're in the resurrection or we're in the revival stage. You know, in, in two days, I revive you. So we're in the revival stage. That's why you're getting so much knowledge. If you wonder why all this stuff, this 
all this knowledge is being poured out now? It's because prophetically, we're in the second day. And in the second day, he revives us. In other words, he brings back to remembrance who we are while we're in the land of our captors. If you've studied this, you would know and understand that this is the people talk, there's a revival coming. There's a, we used to talk about it all the time when I was pastoring. There's a revival coming. We're praying for revival. The revi revival is here. Yeah. It's already begun. We had rumblings of the revival at uh uh, what is that place down there in California <laughs> where they went down there and they got the Holy Ghost? Hmm? Azusa <laughs> Street? Those were rumblings. Those were, it was preparing us for this time. The Holy Spirit was pouring out at that time, right? Preparing for the 2,000 years, for the true revival. Many of us, it went right over our heads. Truth. But now, because the time is now, we're getting it. And it's a wonderful time to be alive. It's a wonderful time to be alive because we're seeing prophecy unfold. We should eat what we should not. He says, um, okay, he says, now of the, of, the, 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 of the birds, he says in verse 13, and these are they which you shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ostrich and the osprey, you know, these different birds, these vultures and the raven, you see. And, and it says the nighthawk and the, the cockle and the, and the hawk after his kind and the little owl and the coron and the, the great owl and the swan and the pelican and the gear eagle and the stork and the after hurricane and the, there's a lot of birds, right? And the bat, who, who gonna eat a bat? People eat bat. All fowls that creep going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. All fowls creeping on all four. So it gives you a list of what we should not eat. Because again, when you eat the abominable thing, it hampers your ability to hear the Ruch HaKodesh. Your spiritual ears are blind, are, are stopped up and your spiritual eyes are blinded. So hearing, you won't hear. Seeing, you will not see. Tells us that, the scripture tells us that. We didn't always understand why this happens, but now the cloak is removed so there will be no more ignorance. We can understand what these things mean and how what we eat, what we hear, what we see affects us and it affects the spiritual uh, spirituality of who we are. Because, you know, it, it doesn't matter if I was born and they called me a Jew. It doesn't matter if I was born and they called me an Israelite. What matters is the fact that I obey the Torah and we're born again of the spirit of God. Because you can be born a Jew, born an Israelite, born a Hebrew Israelite, and reject the Torah, reject the laws and the teachings of God, right? And it's very simple and easy, but the problem is we still live in the land of our captors. Let me make this historical reference to you. When the Israelites, the, the Jewish nation, the Yehudim, were taken in, in, into the Persian captivity, when we talk about Purim, they went back into the land. They left the land of the captors, right? Even though the captors still had control over them, they went back home and they were able to kind of reestablish themselves in the land again, which is how we got Ezra's teachings about and how we set up our Sidurim. That's because they went back home. Now, in the case of the, the Jews, the European Jews, Jews of Europe, when they went through this terrific time of Holocaust, they didn't stay there, they left. Many of them came to the US, came through Allison, came through uh, what well, that Ellis Island, and they came here as guests, as welcome guests, but they left the land where they were persecuted. And so they have freedom to live in the different lands that they went to. So they left the land of their captors and they were able to prosper. The world accepted them and gave them 
property and business and help them to get set up in them. Whereas for the African Israel, hear what I say, for African Israel, for African Jehudim, this was not the case, right? We are still, for the most part, in the land of our captors. We are still prisoners of war. We have a, a, an idea of, of freedom, but we really don't enjoy true freedom, right? And we won't receive, we won't enjoy true freedom until we're back in our land. That is Africa, Israel. Hear what I'm saying? Africa, Israel. And if you watch those films, here goes my segue again. If you watch the film, you know what I'm talking about. Africa, Israel. You'll understand that we'll be in Africa, Israel, Africa, Israel, until Messiah comes, and then we'll go back to Africa, Israel, Northeast. But the, understand, it's not just that little piece of land, right? There's more to it that we've been taught, all right? More to it. So when I say, you know, don't be trying to fight to get back to the land of Israel proper, don't do that. Messiah is coming, just like he came for Moshe, and just like in this time of Passover, we're looking for the deliverer. The deliverer came, revealed the message of the Father, and took us in. That's going to happen again. That's what this Passover is about, preparing us, preparing us so we can prepare our children and our children's children while we're in this time of revival. Now, let me keep on going, okay? Now, it says, I'm, I'm skipping down again. I'm skipped down, all right? It says, the car in verse 26, the carcass of every beast which haveth the hoof and is not cloven hoof, nor cheweth the cud, are unclean unto you. Every one that touches them shall be unclean. Now, what it means by that, if the animal is dead, you know, like you see roadkill and you go out there and move that thing, or if your dog died, listen to that, if you have a pet dog, you don't, we don't eat dog, right? Well, in Korea, they eat dog and cats too. But, but we don't eat that stuff, right? But if your pet dies, if you touch them or you handle them to move them, then you're unclean. How do you fix that? My granddaughter's here. How do you fix that? How do you fix that? You have to take a migva. You've got to take a, a shower. You got to take a bath. You got to get it off of you. The thing that is required in that mission, I'm giving you some little teaching here. This is a little bit of teaching for you. The way you do your migva today in the land of the captivity, if you don't have, you get your bathtub, fill that thing up and completely immerse yourself in it, say the blessing, all right? Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has commanded us to do what? Immersion, immerse ourselves. If you do that, in the evening, you're clean. If you go to a funeral, you know, if you go to a funeral, you go to the funeral, guess what you do? You do the same thing. You go back and you do your, your mikvah and you're clean in the evening. Anything that defiles your body, your body, anything that defiles your body that is unclean to your body, the way to get out of it is do your migva, right? Do your immersion, say the blessing and come out of it, right? That's for the children of Israel. That's not for the nation. That's for us. That's for your good, all right? This is our secret teaching. Nobody listening, right? Nobody listening right now. This is our secret teaching. Tell you it's a secret. You go ahead and find out about it. It's true right? So not only do you eat properly, if you touch those things that you, again, if you touch something unclean, even if it's a clean animal and you find it already dead, it's tomatoes. We're not supposed to eat something that, that died of itself or that was killed by a car or that was killed in a way that is non-kosher. If we touch it, we're unclean because it, we, we're contaminated ourselves and we need to wash off. Why? Because if you wash those things that are over a period of time, they get maggots and stuff on them. Right, they declare they bloat and all that stuff, all that stuff. So you're unclean. You need to wash yourself, right? Wash your whole body because you are a holy nation. You are a holy people. These things are for us. Okay, so it talks about again, verse 29. These shall <clears throat> be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creepeth upon the earth, the weasel, the mouth, the tortoise, after this kind. You know, people eat turtle. You eat turtle soup. That's not for us. Okay, if you see those, the, the, the nutrient rats that are uh, vegetarian, we don't eat those either. Some people do. You go to different places, be careful what you eat when you go to Gentile nation, these heathen nations. They'll, they'll put something on your plate, right? You don't want it. 
You don't eat no, we don't eat lizard. We don't eat, again, snails, and we don't eat the mold. Mold make a mess of your yard, all right? So it says, and they should be unclean, you know, let me read this verse 31. These are unclean to you among all the creep that creep, whosoever does touch them when they be dead. Again, it's the carcass, when it is dead, right? Shall be unclean to you. So if you touch a camel when it's alive, you cut your weeds when it's alive, it, it, that it has no effect. It's not the same effect as when it is dead, right? Live animals, you can touch them. You just don't eat them all, right? Understand that. Live animals, live beasts. If you touch a, 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 a wild boar while he's alive, just wash your hand when you eat. You know, it's no big deal. But if it's a dead carcass, then you got to do a mikvah, right? Submerge yourself in the water and come out. You know, like you go to church and you get to baptism, baptize in the name of the Father Holy, and the Holy Ghost, right? The only thing is we say is, we thank you, Father, for commanding us in the immersion, right? So, again, if you want to say in the name of the Father and the Son, that's fine. That's your choice, right? That's no fine. There's no law against that. Again, there's no teaching against that. There's no teaching, all right, against that. All right. So, again, so it talks about all those things, that are, the fish, the birds that we should not eat. Read this for yourself. Read this for yourself. Let me go on to the, let me go on to take you a little deeper into it. Uh, in the next parish, y'all, which was, just follows this, Tesaria, the first thing it comes, it starts off with is about the, the woman in childbirth. And the eighth day, if it's a, let me just read this. This is important for us because when we're in our communities, when we, if you grew up in, in a black community, in the old days, the neighbors used to take care of their neighbors. When the woman had a child, they'd bring food over to them and all that stuff. Well, in Africa, in the African villages, it's, it goes further than that because we call what we call nida, right? So when she, a person, a woman goes into that period, that time of the month, she separates herself from the family. She doesn't cook. She doesn't do anything. She doesn't touch anything holy. Remember in the story about uh, one of the children, the, 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 the well, Rebecca, was it Rebecca? Or it was the daughter that sat on the, she said she was in the womanly way and he wouldn't, he said he just backed off, right? He just backed off. Uh, this is when Laban, this is when Laban, Jacob and Laban, and they were leaving, right? And he chased after him, he found her and she had taken his idols and she hid him in her sack. And so she told him that she was in the way. He wouldn't touch her because of the custom was, if she's in the way, she's unclean. She was unclean. So that's what that story is about. She was unclean. So he wouldn't touch her because she had to go that, you know, seven days. And then the eighth day, she'd be do her mikvah again, do the prayer and do the mikvah, and she's clean. When in childbearing, it's the same thing, only it's it's longer time period. So now they give you what they call family leave without family leave. They give the women family and the men family leave. Do you know what that's for? That's so that you, you know, the wife can, can rest right? The woman just had the baby. She can rest. But in our communities, the other women and the other women of the family would help her during that time of her what? Uncleanness, right? Her separate time of, I should call it time of her separation, right? Now, here's the thing about, I want to, I want to say this, make it fast. Um, let me read this. Let me just read this. Chapter 12, verse 2. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days, right? That's what I was talking about, the days of uncleanness, right? It says, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, she shall be unclean, right? It says, and in the eighth day, the flesh of the, his foreskin, talking about the male, shall be circumcised. Now, you, you know, see, this is entering into the, the covenant agreement, right? This is the covenant that the, the, the male child is entering. In. This is the circumcision that we do to our children. And, and on that eighth day, he receives his name as well. And there is no ceremony actually for the naming for the girls, but we do do a naming ceremony. The, my my uh, granddaughter received her name. You know, we did two weeks. We waited two weeks and then we gave her her her. her spiritual name or her Israel name, 
but for the male child, so that you know now, if you're going to have children in the future, if it's a male child, circumcision, when the circumcision is done, we usually go and get a mohel and you have a sandig and you and the rabbis will do it. But if you do it in the hospital, make sure you do the prayer, right? Pray over your child and do the, let the circumcision be done. When he comes home, we finish it up, right? And we do, if the, the first male child, we, we do the redemption. And all these things are important for us. You see, all that is not, it's in the Torah. I'm just giving you a crash course on this importance, the importance of, of our custom, our teaching. This is, not a, this is not a custom. This is our teaching. This is our mincha, our spiritual work, our spiritual walk, right? Okay? So this is important for us. And this is telling you one part of one of the ceremonies that we do for our children, the naming ceremony. This is... Um, uh, a part of uh, the times of life that we go through, right? That in our spiritual journey, in our spiritual walk. One of the first one, again, is the, when the child is born, the naming ceremony, all right? The re redemption of the firstborn. All these things are important, okay? So there's a days of purification for the women, all right? So read chapter 12 of Leviticus. I'm going to leave that to you. Read it. If you didn't read it, read it. Okay, now let's go on. Um, leprosy. This is what I want to share with you. I'm going to stop this share. Leprosy, all right? This is important for you. I think this is going to be important for you, uh, an important teaching for you. Uh, something that you don't get unless you go to the synagogue or, or go to a Hebrew Israelite camp that is teaching this, you won't get it. All right, so um, let me see if I can find it. Oh boy, what is this? Am I? In, I'm in the wrong book. Look at that. I got the wrong one. Okay, let me find what I'm looking for. That's not the one. I'm having a problem with my computer today finding what I need to get to you. I'm having a big problem. Well, you I'm can just say, you it. can just, uh, we all on Leviticus 12. You can just go ahead and tell us where to go. And I can yeah, read. you won't be able to see what I want you to see. Okay. Um, <coughs> if you want, 13, you won't be able right? to see. Yeah, there's something I want you to see. Um, I want to show it to you. And the only way I can do it is through. Okay, let's see if I can do it now. All right. Uh, I would say part of it had just flashed up if that was it, the part it? about the leprosy. Yeah, chapter yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I want to get to you. I want to get you that leprosy. So you just had it up a second ago. I did? Yeah. I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm having a problem here. Somebody don't want y'all to know something. <laughs> Somebody's trying to keep y'all out of, but we going to... I thought it was what? interesting, though, that you had mentioned about in that uh, chapter 12, though, where... Uh, it's the woman is unclean longer if she has a female child than if she has a male child. I thought that was yeah. I, I noticed that too. It was sixty six days versus thirty three days. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I noticed that, Minister Mike. Yeah, it is a longer day for the for the women, and um, you know, make me look at my my milk from, I from years past. Israel. We could have followed that. I could have rested all those days. Yeah, you could have. When I was on my cycle, I wouldn't have been doing nothing. I would have just been laying up in the house, uh, and he would have had the somebody would have had to cook and clean. But we That's over right. here, we over here in this Egypt. I had to work doing all of that. Uh huh. See, they, they <laughs> de deprive you of your rights, right? Yeah. <laughs> As an Israelite, yeah, they deprive you of your rights. So you got to, you know. But uh, now they're giving you like maternity leave and they're giving the father some time. I was looking at my benefits uh, earlier uh, last month when I came on board permanent and I was look, looking at all of these benefits that the uh, the father gets and the mother gets when a newborn house. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, yeah, Mr. Griff, Mr. Griff got two months when oh. he just had our, my grandchild, Zion. And, yeah, I'm out here in uh, Cali. I just wife, came off my eight week. I had eight weeks and she got 16 weeks. And she got, oh, okay. Wow. 16 weeks? Uh-huh. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. So, so 
I wanted to show you this thing, but I'm not able to show it to you. I don't know what's going on with my. Okay, Rabbi, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to keep it moving, Rabbi. Yeah, we're gonna I'll read have it for to you. Keep it moving. The hostess for the mostest, so All we right. can just read it out. We follow, follow along in the Bible with you. Okay, you can't read this. This is on sephria.com. This is well, we can from just the read, mission. We, I'm we gonna can read, read from read the mission. Thirteen or whatever uh, one you want us to read on. <laughs> okay, it's in the Mishnah. All right. And and what it says is this, this is and this is now if you're reading if you're reading in the chapter thirteen, where it talks about the the um, you all right leprosy, all right. If you talk about leprosy, I'm going to read this out of the Mishnah, all right. Okay. All right. So it talks about you know it talks about the bright spot and the dull spot. This is for the children of Israel. So you again, we're trying to get you to understand and know who you are right know who you are know who the bible is talking about all right so it says this the bright spot in a german appears as dull this is in, in reference to leprosy all right and the dull white spot in the ethiopian appears as a bright spot rabbi ishmael said the children of israel may I be atonement for them are like boxwood neither black nor white but the intermediate shade all right so Rabbi Akira says the painter have materials which they portray figures in black and in white and in the intermediate shade. Let therefore a paint of intermediate shade be brought and applied around the outside of the nega, all right, or the, the, the spot. And it will then appear as skin of the intermediate shade. So what they're saying is the children of Israel, right, are not like the Ethiopian, nor are they like the Ashkenazim. In the Hebrew, it says Ashkenazi, actually, right? Which means the white or the white skin. So for the children of Israel, you are a dark boxing wood. You are different shades of brown. We are. We have to understand that. These teachings, you're not going to find open source. You're going to have to be able to dig and find them but they are there, they're in the Mishnah, they're in the Talmud, all these teachers have been there, but we have been taught not to, again, we have been taught not to study these sources. These sources are there for us to find out who we are, why we are here on the earth and our position on the earth. It's so important, right? So. You know, we have some opposition today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right there so so we can give some more uh, conversation. Um, this is for us as the children of Israel because of the revival to find out that the things that are written in the Bible are for us. The Father chose another nation to store and to keep these records for us, for such a time as this, all right? These things that we're learning now are for us because we are in revival. The children of Israel are in revival. This is, if you can receive it, it's like the first resurrection, right? It's a type of a resurrection. Revival is like a resurrection. Right. So we're all talking, we're all thinking that something's got to come out of the sky. We got to come out of the ground. You're in the ground. When you don't know who you are, you're in the ground. You are dead. You have died. Scripture is showing us how it operates in the life. So he's telling you the first resurrection you are experiencing right now. There is a spiritual side to it. But right now, you have to understand where you are in prophecy. We are being, and many of us are fighting against it. See, so it says, Yeshua says, even if someone came from the dead and told you, you still won't receive it. We have come back from the dead and we're telling our brothers and he still will not receive us. Don't think everything has a supernatural spiritual thing that has to be, it's here in plain sight. Stop looking for the pie in the sky. It's happening now. 
Now is your time. He says, return. Teshuvah. Repent. It's saying at Passover, it is time to be reminding us we need to come out of the world system and be the people we are born to be. We have become less than we were created to be. Some of it is our fault. Some of it is not. Regardless, you have an opportunity today. Choose ye this day whom you will serve, whether it be God or man. God says, rest on the seventh day. Man says, rest on the first day. Man says, I'm not gonna get into that. Let me stop right there. Let me stop right there, you know. So I'm gonna put it like this. If you really wanna know who you are, if you really wanna worship the Father, if you really wanna operate in Yeshua Mashiach Ben Davi, if you really want to, you need to know and live this Bible. Starting from the Bereshit Barah Alokim, or Bereshit, Book of Bereshit, and read all the way through to, to you find out where your place is, who you are. We are a wonderful nation of people that have been deprived of our language, our heritage, our culture, our God, our Messiah. But now he has called us to resurrection. He has called us to remember who we are while we're still yet in the land of our captors. If you're not in the land of your captors, then you're not one of us. But if you, when you realize, when you know that you're in the land of your captors, you are one of us. You are one of us, all right? And understand this again. Let me do this too. It doesn't matter what color you are because we are every color. We're scattered amongst every nation. Some of us look alike, some of us don't. But we're scattered amongst every nation. The key is, do you listen to, do you study, do you live by the Torah, which is our contract agreement? And in its very basic form, it tells us how to live where we are in preparation, in preparation for where we will go, All right? We live with our eyes on Israel, meaning we are the people that are going to God. We are people that are searching for a city that is not built by the hands of man. We live by the Abrahamic faith. Beta Israel, who we are, didn't go by the Talmud. We went by the Torah proper and we had some mishnah but we we live by the, if you know the torah if you know the first five books if you know them if you live by them you are saved as we like to say are you saved when people somebody asks you are you saved from now on, you say well are you in the torah say i'm in the torah yeshua was in torah yeshua as we say walking torah so if you're Ask me if I'm saved. Yes, I am in Torah, which means I am saved. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Anybody have any um, questions before we go ahead and um, go into our closing prayer? Griff, I sent you a message asking to do the closing prayer. Um, I know I got out of there how to be a holy nation. <clears throat> Rabbi said how to be a holy nation. The instructions, he gave you the instructions on how to change, how to be a holy nation, how to walk in it, the cash of law, what to eat, what not to eat. And um, we understand it's not going to happen overnight. We are in this Egypt, but you can start just letting that marinate in your spirit and say, I, got, I have to do better. I have to be better. I have to learn how to be in this holy nation because I don't want to be outside the camp. I don't want to be left behind. I want to get closer to my family. I want to build an intimate relationship with Yahweh and Yahshua. We're giving you the instructions. And like you said, if you think you're walking in anointing now, what you, what you probably are, who are we to say? But just think it is magnified. <clears throat> just think how much more power you'll have. Adding this, adding a Torah, adding what the teachings, the Hebrew Israelite, the Hebrew congregation is giving you. To add that on top of it, huh? 
you really be moving some things. Um, anybody have any questions before we go ahead and, and, and close out in prayer? No, I was just going to say either you're feeding health or you're feeding sickness. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm, that's deep right there. So true, yeah. What are you mm -hmm. feeding? <laughs> what are you feeding? And when you, not just down, talking about when, food, when you lay down tonight, you can think about, like, right, it's not just about food. The flesh wants everything. It wants medicine. It wants sex. It wants food. It wants all that. So when you fast, it's not just about food either. It's fasting from a lot of other things that you like, that you enjoy, that the flesh always wants, that it'll rise up on you. And you say, sit down. I control you, flesh. Sometimes we are our worst enemy. And that's what fasting is about, too. And a lot of times, matter of fact, all the time I fast, God showed me me first. Mm. Before he showed me the enemy, he showed me me. So if you ain't ready to see you and what you're doing wrong, have a seat. But if you want to go to another level to put that flesh in check, to, to deal with, with, with the enemy, to, to pray for them and to have power over them, we're giving you the instructions. Minister Griff, are you ready to close the prayer out? Yeah, sorry. Just made it back over here. I got it. Blessed are you, Elohim, king of the universe. Blessed are you, Elohim, sustainer of life. Blessed are you, Elohim, for you are one. Father, we come to you with humble hearts, just thanking you for another day, another chance to praise your name and do your will. We thank you for the teachings that you've given unto us today. We ask that your Ruach HaKodesh just activates within us to accept these teachings and to be able to take them and not only be hearers, but also doers of the word, Father. We ask that as we go throughout this life, as we may battle with some different things, as we make the conversion, and as we uh, fully assume our identity, that you allow that spirit to awaken in us and to allow us to, to just do the things in which you've taught us to do, Father, to do the things in which Yeshua taught us to do, Father, to do the things in which the Torah teaches us to do. We ask that as we look at these kosher laws and as we look at the different foods that we should eat and that we should stay away from, that you empower us and embolden our spirit to be able to, to just follow instruction, Father. If we know that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God, and if we have the fear of God in us, that we'll follow instruction, no matter how miseducated we've been in the past, that we can come back to our original teachings and our first love, and we can reclaim who we are through the different processes which you've given us. We thank you for every soul represented on this line, Father, for all the beautiful souls here that just congregate and share this information and yes. allow us to grow in who we are and allow us to grow in, in our spiritual prowess for we thank you for who you are, Father, and who we are becoming, for we are continually becoming more and more. We're running this race, trying to finish this race so that we may be called good and faithful servant at those end times, Father. We just give it all to you and thank you and lift all of our prayer requests up to you. Anybody that may have sickness, may have illness, may have disease on this line, we raise that prayer request up to you for my brother Kirk next door who just got diagnosed, got a diagnosis of cancer, Father. And for the other folks on here, we know that it's just running random it uh, today in this society and we just give you all the honor the glory and the praise because you are the author of all things and you have everything under your control so we just ask for wisdom and guidance as we go through all these different situations for you said you'll be a lamp unto our feet and we just yes, thank you Lord. for that and we know that 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 is true father if we just take a step by step if we don't worry about the whole path but just look at what's in front of us that you'll take care of the rest you'll give us the words that we need when we're in front of the judge you'll do all that you are the olive and the and the bet father you are the alpha and the omega you are are everything and we just thank you for that we ask that as we go into this next week that you continually just lead us by your by your spirit that you allow your presence to be with them with not only within us but also on the outside of us father for we know that we may be the only torah that some folks ever read and so we just ask that we can give it up to you and that we can be that light that shines that light that shines and not put under a bushel that our light is set upon a hill that the whole that the whole world may see that it's set upon the table that the whole house may see that everywhere we go that that light just shines just shines forth and brings out the light in others that they may see us and give glory to our father in heaven 
we just thank you, Father. We just thank you for all the blessings that you continually poured out the sky for us, for baby Zion and all the other babies that are represented here on this call and for our listeners that you build them up in strength and wisdom and in stature that they may be that they may just walk into their destiny and their purpose and find who they are within you, Father. We just thank you so much. We thank you for having sound, sound mind. And thank you for having able bodies. We thank you for, for the spirit just being within us, for all the things we may take for granted, for the breath that you place within us on a daily basis, for the sky still being blue. We just thank you, Father, for you are the holder, the sustainer of all things. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's most holy name we pray. Amen. Yeshua name, amen. We thank you for that beautiful prayer, Minister Griff. I was looking at my notes from last year on 4-3-2021. Uh, we was over in San, San Francisco. Your anniversary is coming up 4-4-2022. So happy anniversary. Thank uh, you. God loves that unity of marriage. And you've created Zion out of that marriage, a, a child. And so we, we thank the Lord for his many blessings. And I, and I delivered a message called love that day. And I'm just going to do that. John 1 and 29 says, the next day, John saw Yahshua coming to him. And he said, look, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so love, don't get bogged down. That's what the Lord was giving me when, when he was playing. Don't get bogged down with that war that's going on. Don't get bogged down with all those situations that we ain't, we're not even involved in. That's not our problem. Don't get bogged down with, with thinking I, I've sinned and I can't, I'm gonna wait till I get better. No, he wants you right now. He wants you to change right now. There's a fresh anointing. There's a fresh beginning. Every Saturday, every Sabbath day, you have an opportunity to change. Don't wait and say, oh, but I, I can't give my life to the Lord because I'm fornicating. I'm doing adultery. I'm doing, I'm cussing. Give it to him now because only he can help you with it anyway. Don't get bogged down. That's what God was telling me. And we've all had children and we've all done things wrong and we've all been through the fornication. And we've all, don't get bogged down with that. The new, the new, the new, new beginnings, new learnings new teachings, refreshing. He is a new God every day, every hour to give you new, new, fresh anointing on you. He don't change, but he'll give you that new, fresh anointing. And I, and I pray that someone get it and the angels of the heaven say, if it's just one that's watching today, they get it, they rejoice. No one left behind all his sheep. He loves all his sheep and he loves you. We thank you all for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you uh, next Saturday. We ask that you share, leave a comment, leave your email address and join us. Okay. Easter is a pagan holiday. We ask that you have new Passover. Let me see about this Passover. Let me try it. Let me see what, what goes on. Let me see something different happen in my life. I'm ready. We love you, and we'll see you next Saturday. Shalom. 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 Shalom.